Hello and welcome to the second class, the second day, the second lesson in this series, beginner series, primary series, introductory series to the Feldenkrais method of somatic education. As you can see, I was talking about the title yesterday and I found a catchy title. I could have titled the lesson different names, like for example, a chest opener. But we're talking about the intercostal muscles, the muscles in between the ribs, and that these muscles can let go, that these rigid structures can let go. Anyways, I'm excited to teach you the next lesson and let's get to it. So what is slightly different in this series from my other videos, my other videos are more tight, more compact, more faster. And in this series, I really teach it like an introductory series. So I use more time. When we lie down on the floor, I, I use more time. I give you more time to come down on the floor. It's not zack, 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 zack. You can really have an experience of getting aware of arriving, arriving in your room. Just as I am arrived, I have been arriven, arrived, I am here, you are there, we take the time to go through the lesson. But we don't waste time, so please come to lie on your back, on a carpet or a firm surface, not too cold, it should be cozy, and we start the lesson. Please bring your feet to standing. That's our starting position. I will join you for this. Maybe there's a difference between what I am doing and what you are doing because I am giving the pace. I'm the pacemaker. When I talk, you can hear it and you do the lesson. So maybe Maybe you have this stance of waiting for the next instruction. And this can cause a little bit of stress. So maybe you can move away from this little bit of stress if you have it. I don't know if you have this little stress of when is he going to talk? When is he going to give me the next instruction? And just be on the floor. Just be with yourself and uh, maybe there will be a next in instruction. Maybe there will be a suggestion for movement. Maybe not, but of course there will be, but when will it be? You will hear it, you will hear it, you will hear it and then you can react. So your feet are standing, this is our starting position. Interlace your fingers, like we did yesterday. Either way, habitual or non-habitual, bring the hands the, with the interlaced hands behind the back of your head. Not in your neck, but the back of your head. And lift your head with the help of your hands. So we had different directions for the elbows. And we focused on the breathing. You can try that. We focused on the space that is created behind your head and behind your shoulders. But you can also focus on where you can feel the pressure on the floor, where you can feel the weight of your head is going, is leaning, where is your head leaning against the floor, your neck, the breathing, we have the breath, the out breath, we had the out breath, then there have been different directions for lifting the head, on the midline, the right elbow more towards the left knee, the left elbow more towards the right knee, so these were the ideas we played with in the last lesson and we explored in the last lesson. Just a little review a couple of times just to bring it back, bring this feeling back that you had in the end of the lesson. Then take a short rest. Then bring your feet to standing again, knees pointing towards the ceiling. We 
were also talking about a little bit about this. And now bring your attention to your pelvis, like the area where your pelvis lies, is resting on the floor, where it touches, should be the sacrum. Maybe you can feel that, maybe you can feel your lower spine or the skin of your lower spine, but then it's the sacrum, the pelvis, and the bottom part of the sacrum, there's the tailbone. <laughs> Isn't it weird we have a tailbone? Tailbone, why do we have this? So please roll your pelvis a little bit forwards. More towards the tailbone. So you can feel the pressure more on your tailbone. And then please roll back, just let go of this. Try to find it. For some people it's really difficult and for some people it's really easy. Of course the hip joints have to be free to some degree to allow for this movement. So maybe your lower back lifts a little bit from the floor. Maybe your back arches a little bit. You can try all these things. In the end, it's really just the pelvis that tilts forward. The rest of your body can just rest and it's the pelvis that tilts. It's an anterior pelvic tilt forward. So you roll more onto your tailbone. If you have experience with Feldenkrais or with awareness, with some kind of bodywork, dance, then this will be easy for you to find. Just roll forwards and come back to the middle, to the starting position. This can be nice. This can feel really nice. And then also try the other direction, backwards. So you gently flatten your lower back so that the point of contact where you feel your sacrum or your pelvis is resting on the floor, this, this point of contact rolls slightly upwards towards the mid of your back. Without, without like forcing it, without pressure, without a big movement, just very gently. There shouldn't be like a constra const const contraction of your belly muscles, but just, just the rolling of the pelvis. Maybe you need your feet a little bit, maybe your torso. How do you roll the pelvis, pelvis, pelvis backwards and forwards? Try it a couple of times. Roll backwards and forwards, backwards. So connect these two directions. Roll the pelvis backwards and forwards until you have a nice rolling of the pelvis in both directions. I have other, other lessons here on YouTube which focus more on this movement. So this is just an introduction to this. Very simple movement and we don't explore much further. So that's just forwards and backwards. We will, we will leave it with this today in this lesson. So please uh, stretch out your legs, elongate your legs and come to rest on the floor. Take a short break. Just feel how it is like after this little pelvic movements. Mm, your And then bring your feet to stand again, interlace your fingers, bring the hands behind the back of your head and lift your, start to lift your head again a little bit and see how it is now, if that feels different than in the beginning. So you can feel what you did before affects what you did now. The little pelvic movements before affects how you lift the head now. You can feel the space. You can feel for all the things we already did and we already mentioned. I already mentioned and we already did. You can feel out for those things. 
it should feel different to lift the head now than before. Easier, more better organized, the chest, the chest more open, more flexible, more willingly to let the head move in different directions. Then bring the hand to your sides and for a try, just lift the head without the hands. See how, how that feels like. You can use your shoulders, you can use all, all the tricks and thoughts and everything you can think of to make the lifting of the head easier. Alright, take a short break. Bring your feet to standing again, interlace your hands, hands behind the back of your head, and the elbows towards the ceiling, and now lift the head again, and when you lift the head, tilt your pelvis backwards a little bit. It's like you round, you round your whole back. You can feel how the lifting of the head is affecting your pelvis and then you give your pelvis just a little push and try that for a couple of times and now let's try something else when you lift your head Tilt the pelvis forwards. It's the arching back. Arching the back. When you lift your head, you tilt the pelvis forward, you roll more onto your tailbone. Your spine becomes very curvy, like a S, or like a bumps in the road. You lift your head, you tilt the pelvis forwards. You can do it on an out breath if you like. And then take a break again. So we had these variations with the uh, tilting of the pelvis and lifting of the head, how they relate to each other, how they connect or disconnect. So we try that for a couple of times, we explore how that feels and at the same time we do it, right? We, we do it and we think about it, we explore it and this changes something in the organization of the body. Let's bring your feet to standing again and just lift the head again and see you can do it with hands or without your hands. Just lift the head and see how the, your awareness for the pelvic tilt and the usage of your pelvis helps to lift the head. So this would be a forward head posture in standing. But when you release and you let your head go back down again, this would be a very upright more than upright posture. Actually, in standing, the head is always a little bit forwards. And if you can have your head sink to the floor, then you can also stand upright without a forward head posture. Let's explore a little bit with the eyes. So, please bring your feet to standing. You can close your eyes if you like, have the eyelids closed and then look up towards your hair. Just move your eyes up and then let go of the eyes again, just a resting position of the eyes. You can have the eyes open or closed and look up again and let go and see does this do anything with your facial muscles, with your face? You can relax your face, you can relax your head so it's Try only to move the eyes, the eyes only, eyes up and let go, eyes up and let go, eyes 
up and let go. And maybe you can still feel something is triggered in your neck, but try to really just lie on the floor, relaxed and move your eyes up, the eyeballs up and let go again. So this can be a fairly difficult move, just to move the eyes without any head movements. Even for me, I have to concentrate on it. You have to inhibit the movement of the head. So it's just the eyes that roll upwards. So you roll your eyes upwards to look upwards and then you stop looking upwards. You look with your eyes upwards and then stop looking upwards. For me it's like I can feel my whole face, face is moving upwards. You look towards your hairline and then back to center again. It's just a lifting of the eyes and then let go again. And there's a couple of things to notice. Maybe you jump from the middle position up and then you jump down again or jump down back to home. If you do that, try to do it in like two steps. Just jump a little bit and jump a little bit until your eyes arrive up and then let go again. Maybe you can do it even more fluently that your eyes move up in a one fluent motion and then they come back in a fluent motion. Yeah? This should be comfortable, not a strain. If you can't find it right now, try it again tomorrow or try it when you're lying in bed. You can do this in the, in the evening, in the morning. Just look up. Try to make it a fluent movement and then drop the eyes again back to home and then take a short rest. And then try the other direction, try downwards to look downwards and let go again. Move your eyeballs, your gaze downwards and then stop looking downwards. It's also interesting to know where is the home location? Where is the center between up and down? So we don't move up and down with the eyes in, in one go, but we divide it into up and home and down and home. So we now, right now we're looking downwards. And also if it's just well, like one flip of the eyes, try to make it a couple of steps. Go down a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit until you can't go further down or can't roll the eyeballs further down and then let go again. You stop rolling the eyeballs further down. And then maybe you can turn it into a fluent movement to fluently move the eyes downwards and then back home again. And then take a short break. So it's a day later and I'm editing this right now. This is also why I have different clothes and I'm not shaved anymore. When I look at the, when I look at the video, it's so funny. My eyes also go in all sorts of directions and this jumping. I've seen the most beautiful eye movements in some clients. Usually the, the younger ones, the, the younger women, they have very, very smooth movement. Whereas the guys, they have more jerky movements and the older we get, the more difficult it seems like to be in control of smooth eye movements. So I'm thinking that's something I want to work on myself as well. And yeah, that's all. Let's continue with the video. And now connect these two movements to move the eyes up, a fluent movement maybe. Maybe at some points you can get aware that you don't see and then back home and back down and then starting to go back up 
and back down. Like when you jump, maybe you notice it's not all fluent all the way, but at some point the eyes are jumping and at some point there's no picture. <laughs> like you pull the cord from your television. At some, for short moments, it appears like there's, it's not that the picture is missing, but there is no new input because there's really not much to see, right? When you go up and down, you know your environment, but when you focus on how you see and what you see, it can be pretty interesting. Again, this is only a beginner's lesson and we just do it for a little bit. We can do this much more in depth to explore vision and to explore eye function, but we just leave it at this point, take a short rest. And now we shift our focus, bring your awareness please to your head and move your head a little bit upwards, which is to when you, when you feel where your head is resting on the table, you roll your head more towards, maybe you, you can't really roll, but you need to drag your head more towards the top of your head so that your chin moves more towards the ceiling and then back to center position. Another way to describe this movement is focus on the tip of your nose and move your nose upwards, the tip of your nose upwards and back to where it was. It's like a little nodding movement, nodding upwards. But you can also feel where your head is lying. On the other side, the back of your head, you could think of dragging the back of your head downwards. Results in the same movement, different perception. Or, as I mentioned before, you could focus on your chin and bring your chin closer towards the ceiling without lifting your head and then back. <laughs> Many different ways to describe the same movement. Try to make this smooth. And then stop doing that for a second, for a minute, half a minute, couple of seconds. Just take a short rest, so we have a pause in between the different movements, the movements we combine to a movement sequence. And now think of the other direction. So bring your chin closer towards the table. Or move the back of your head upwards on the table. Drag the back of your head upwards on the table. Or if you focus on the tip of your nose, bring the tip of your nose downwards. So this is the opposite direction of nodding as we did before. And then combine these two directions. Nod upwards over the midline, over the home position, wherever that is, and then downwards, and then upwards again, and downwards again. Do this a couple of times, just to get a feel for it, how you do this, what you focus on, what this does to your neck, to your shoulders, what you feel in the rest of your body if you don't exclusively focus on your head but if you bring attention to other areas of your body your pelvis maybe we'll think more about this in a couple of minutes now take a short rest just a pause a break so we did some eye movements and we did some head or neck movements so let's combine those two look up like roll your eyeballs upwards and also not upwards. So head and eyes go together upwards and back to home position. Try, or maybe you start with your eyes, you start to look up and then you nod up and then you stop doing this and come back to the center position. Try this a couple of times. And here you also try to make it smooth. 
try to make it homogeneous. Homogeneous, homo. The eye movements should be at the same speed as your head movements. If that is possible at all. And then try downwards, to so not downwards. And also to look downwards at the same time. Come up again. So your eyes and your head goes into the same direction. So you a long neck and then a very short neck. A very long neck and then a short neck. Okay, let's take a break. Short rest in between. I hope it, this is easy for you. And if it isn't, practice, work on it. Work on it until it starts to be easy for you. Okay. Then we do one more variation with these two things. And this time... Oops, uh, this time um, we do opposite directions. When you look upwards, you nod downwards, and when you look downwards, you nod upwards. So different directions for head and eye movements. When you look downwards, nod upwards, and when you start to look upwards, nod downwards. Not so easy to do, right? Maybe it is for you, but... I think for most people it's a little bit of a challenge. You start to look downwards while you nod upwards. And you start to look upwards while you nod downwards. And then you try to make this a smooth movement. Without breaking your neck. <laughs> without twisting your eye muscles. Just a couple of times. Then take a short break. We won't go too deep into this again. We continue with this beginner's lesson and see how the head movements and the eye movements affect the lifting of the head and the rolling of the pelvis. How all these things can play together. Now we had uh, three components. We had the pelvis, we had the eyes, and we had the neck. So this is something we can do combinations. We can try to organize them, align them, or differentiate. For example, please bring your feet. The feet need to be standing so that the pelvis is free to move. Interlace your hands. Bring your hands behind your head. And the elbows towards the ceiling and then start to lift your head. And also use the eyes. Use your eyes when you, when you lift the head. Use your eyes to look downwards. And when you come back, look upwards when you lie down the head. So there's many things to watch out for. And you can tilt the pelvis in either direction. And up again. You can try to look upwards while you lift the head. This will be difficult. And when you look upwards towards your head and you try to lift the head, it will be more difficult or less smooth unless you make it smooth. Unless you get conscious, aware, you get aware of what you're doing with your neck when you move your eyes. So you can move your eyes in whatever direction you want without affecting the movement of lifting the head. So this is the master stage. And you can play with these things for a bit. There's a couple of elements. You can do your own variations, your own ideas, your own combinations. And then always come back to center and always take a rest 
to give your body time to integrate, to assimilate, to absorb these new experiences. Experiences? Experiences? It's experience. Experience, yeah. Take, just take a, a rest on, on your back and feel how you're lying on your back now. How you're resting, how, how, where, how do you feel? And then, for the last time, bring your feet to standing. Interlace your fingers, bring the fingers, interlaced hands behind the back of your head and lift your head. Just feel how that feels like. How much of yourself is involved? How much better you know this movement by now? How easier it became or how more elegant maybe? And then also try to lift your head without your hands. How that changed in this lesson and compared to the beginning of the last lesson. I think it's quite nice, isn't it? All right, then please come to sit. Roll over one side and come to sit. Feel how it is to sit after half hour of explorations on the floor. And then also please come to stand up. And feel how you carry your head on top of your shoulders, the shoulders on top of your pelvis and the pelvis on top of your legs. And how you can balance everything on top of each other. And you can place the head and the shoulders in any old position you like when the chest is flexible enough. And you can feel where is the best alignment, where is the best floating, where you can float all your parts. And start to walk a little bit so you carry your head through the room and you carry your shoulders and your pelvis and your feet. You carry yourself through the room and just feel how you do that. All right, should be nice, isn't it? Thank you for participating, thank you for watching. You will find the link for the next video in the description once it is available. Please like the video. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and see you in the next video.